Hello fellow problem solvers, today we're doing a problem from the British Mouth Olympiad 2016 round 2 problem number 4. I suggest you try this problem out for a minimum of 10-20 minutes, ideally 45 to an hour, not more than two and a half hours really. If you'd like to go along with us, give it a go for the next 10 minutes, put your first ideas out on paper. Why am I doing the British Mouth Olympiad? I saw a comment, somebody preparing for the British Mouth Olympiad. I was like, okay, let me make a couple of videos. Let me, you know, be helpful, be useful. And let me motivate others to comments for new problems that are also that are nice. Hopefully that are nice. I saw some people comment on problems which are not my style. And I've looked into them and I was like, oh, I really, really don't want to do them. But I'll do them at some point, at some point. So let's look at this problem. Suppose that P is a prime number and that there are different positive integers u and v, such that P squared is the mean of u squared and v squared. Prove this is a square or twice a square. Okay. So the first thing really is what first, let's just use plain math instead of language. So we have really P squared is equal to u squared plus v squared over two. That's what this is. That's the whole sentence and P is a prime. I think you could write this down. Suppose P is a prime and, there, and P is a prime, U and V are positive integers such that this is true. And so it's a mean. But anyways, prove that this is a square or that it is twice a square. Now this is a bit fishy. 2P minus U minus V. How do I get that? Like that's the big question here. How am I going to get 2p minus u minus v? Well, let's force it. So we have 2p squared. We have minus u squared minus v squared is 0, right? Let's see if we can get a 2p minus u minus v. The, like, how can we ever get that? Well, my thinking here is multiply everything by 2, maybe. So let's see what happens when we multiply everything by 2. When I multiply everything by 2, I have 4p squared. Why, why do I multiply everything by 2? This only makes sense to me as a difference of squares. Now I'm going to get this as a difference of squares. How else am I going to get 2p minus u minus v? Like I have to multiply something through, right? I have to. That's what it seems like. Actually, let me put this on the other side to make it easier for me to not mess up. Okay, now I need u plus v squared on this side. Oh, okay, what do I do then? Well, I'll add 2uv, and I need to subtract it as well, 2uv. And now I can write this as, for p squared is equal to u plus v squared when I use this, and then I have a u and a v left, plus u minus v squared. Now it makes sense how it is we're going to get this and why a square or twice a square. Like, there's a square here once I put this on the other side. So what does this become when I put it on the other side? I invite you here, you know, with this idea in mind, pause for 15 minutes and push the problem further because here is the next step. So now that we've created these squares, let's create it as a difference of squares. So this is going to be 2p minus u minus v. Oh look, it is what it's what we want. Times 2p plus u plus v is equal to u minus v squared. Right. So now what do we have? We have something of the form a times b is equal to c squared. We need to prove that a is a square or twice a square. Or two times a square, right? So if a is a square, then what is b? Well it's also a square. If a is 2 times a square, b is 2 times a square. What does this remind you of? How can you prove this thing? And the answer is, usually the way these things are proved, not always, but usually it's a sort of rule of thumb. If you're doing competitive mathematics, you see this, or just in general, I think, try this. Try to prove that a and b are co-prime, or that they're, well, GCD is at most something, right? That but you have a control over their GCD. Because if A and B have a GCD, let me actually put it, if the GCD of A and B is equal to D, and A is equal to DE, B is equal to DF, then this whole thing becomes D squared EF is C squared, where E and F are relatively prime. 
and then you have e times f is c over d squared. This is, mind you, an integer. And now, uh, two numbers which are relatively prime, their product is a square. This forces them to be what's a, for both of them to be squares. You can think of their prime factorization. Assume p to the two alpha. Assume p to the two k plus one divides e, but p to the two k plus two does not divide e. This would be a contradiction of e being a square. Then from here, from p divide p to the two k plus one divides this. It implies that p to the 2k plus 1 divides c over d squared. And from here, you have that p to the k plus 1 divides c over d. You can infer from here, you can infer this. Because if this wasn't true, then p to the k would divide c and c over d. And then p to the 2k would divide c over d, but p to the 2k plus 1 would not. Right? then this would be like the highest prime dividing c over d. And that is why if you have this situation, e and f are both squares. So how can we use this? And what is the converse really? Like if the GCD is 2, then a is 2 times the square and b is 2 times the square. Right? So that is probably how we're going to be solving this. I haven't tried this problem, but I'm pretty decently sure that's how it's going. So let's see. If this is a, this is b. Their product is a square. Let's look at their GCD. The GCD, let's say a, a prime Q divides 2P minus U minus V. A prime Q divides 2P plus U plus V. Right now I'm saying it's a prime. It need not be a prime. So what do we have? We have from here, and also mind you, if a prime divides both of them, it also divides U minus V. When we subtract, because this is 2p minus this, 2p plus this, we have this prime q divides 4p, right? So now let's say that q is a prime. Actually, let's, you know, let's say it's a prime. Then q is either equal to p or 2. If q is equal to 2, we need to check whether this can be, what's it called? Whether this can be divisible by can this actually be divisible by any old power of 2? Why not? See, to me, the answer seems to be why not? U and V are congruent to the same thing modulo that high power. Say U and V are both 1 modulo 8. And then but do U and V have to be relatively prime? I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure. Let's see what happens. Let's say... Let's see what happens if q is equal to p. This is probably the case that we just need to let go. If q is equal to p, then we have p divides this, and then p divides u plus v, but p also divides u minus v, right? So p divides u plus v, and p divides u minus v. And then p divides u and p divides v from these two things. Assuming p is not equal to 2, I mean, p is equal to 2, we can probably just check by hand, right? p is 2, this is 4. 8 is a sum of two squares that can only be as 4 plus 4. And then this is 0. We are, no, this is, wait, what? Oh, yeah, it's, no, they had done. This is 0, and then we're done. So that finishes up p is equal to, that equal, that finishes up the case p is equal to 2. Assume p is odd. Then p divides u, p divides v. And now do we have any sort of problem with that? Oh, it doesn't look like that. But can this be a difference of squares? This is interesting. Here I invite you to pause for another 10 to 15 minutes and push the problem further. And here's the next step. And here's where the issue is. If P divides U and P divides V, that means that P is less than or equal to both U and V. Because P is, how should I say, U and V are different, because u is not equal to v, this implies that p is going to be less than 1 of uv. And then p cannot be the sum of these two squares, right? Then u squared plus v squared over 2 is greater than p squared plus p squared over 2, which is equal to p squared. 
So this case falls through the cracks. If it wasn't the case that they were different, we would still have this be zero, which is a squared. So that finishes up the case when q is equal to p. Now we're looking at the case where q is equal to two. With which powers of two can divide this? So, and when does that make sense? So it means that u plus v is even, which means u minus v is also even, like both. These are, these are equivalent claims. And now what we have to really show here, if, wait a second, I think we're done now. Because actually we are done, in which case are we done? Say this is, now say their GCD is of the form 2 to the alpha. Yeah, I think we're done here. Here's the thing, let their GCD of these two things be 2 to the alpha. Let this be 2 to the alpha times A. That's what this is, and let this be 2 to the alpha times b, where the GCD of a and b is equal to 1, right? Then we know by the previous thing that we now have a b times 2 to 2 alpha, a b is equal to u minus v over 2 to the alpha squared, where this is an integer. A and B are relatively prime integers, which means what? Both of them are squares. So we have this is of the form. So now A is equal to some, let's call this T squared. And now we have this thing is equal. So now 2P minus U minus V is equal to 2 to the alpha times T squared. Now what do we do? Well, now we can just say really this is equal to 2 to the A alpha over 2, this bottom part, times t squared, and then, like, if alpha is odd, like, I'm just writing this, is if, if alpha is even or odd, I want to capture it at the same time. That's what I'm doing here. I'm being kind of cute with this. And um, that's what this is. So I want, if it's odd, I want to add another alpha. If it's not, I don't. What is that? That is... Oh, actually, that is 2 to the alpha. I mean, that is, by definition, 2 to the alpha minus 2 alpha over 2. And this thing right here is either 1 or 2. This whole thing is either 1 or 2, which means that this is either a square or 2 times a square. And so we are done. This finishes up the problem. It's in number 4 at the British Math Olympiad, round 2. Here, I... Generally, when I see these tests, they are nice. And the thing is, they're trying to get a couple of people, they're trying to get a couple of dozen people, I believe, to get to an IMO camp from here. Um, it's a cute, it's a, I think it's a pretty cute, nice little training problem that you can use. And this finishes up our problem here. And as always, thanks for problem solving.